Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we will recount the 1919 race riots in Britain and specifically the riot that led to the lynching of Charles Watton, a 24-year-old ship's fireman from Bermuda. In 1919, following the end of the First World War, starting with an outbreak of violence in Glasgow in January, race riots happened around Britain until late in the summer, including in Liverpool, Hull, Cardiff, Salford, Newport, and South Shields. There were several separate outbreaks in the east end of London. These riots were in retaliation against job shortages and the growing black communities in Britain. Since the 16th century, the black presence in London and Liverpool had been noticeable, but Liverpool's black population grew dramatically during the war as black people were made welcome by industries such as chemicals, sugar refining, and munitions in order to fill the labor shortage created when white British workers were enlisted in the army forces. Liverpool became a powder keg at the end of the First World War thanks to large-scale demobilization and unemployment. The city's black population swelled to 5,000. Tensions mounted as black and white ex-servicemen competed for work. The situation reached boiling point when 120 black workers employed in the sugar refineries and oil cake mills were sacked because whites refused to work alongside them. Many black people were low on money and were evicted from their lodgings. They joined the ranks of several hundred destitute black ex-servicemen, some of whom had lost limbs in the war. The colonial office was petitioned to repatriate the men back to the colonies with a five shillings bursary for food, clothing, and tools. At the same time, a deputation representing 5,000 jobless white ex-servicemen complained that black workers were undercutting them in the wages market. The port was a racial tinderbox, and on June 4th of that year, it exploded when West Indian John Johnson was brutally stabbed in the face by two Scandinavian sailors because Johnson refused to give them a cigarette in a pub. The following night, at around 10 o'clock, Johnson's friends went back to the pub in retaliation. During the fight, a policeman was kicked unconscious. The police responded by raiding a row of hostels and other houses occupied by the black community in Upper Pitt Street. There was resistance to this incursion and four officers were injured. Two of them sustained gunshot wounds, seemingly from the same bullet. An enraged mob gathered outside the houses. Charles Watton, who had no involvement in the fighting, ran out and was pursued by two policemen and a crowd of around 300. They chased him half a mile to the Queen's Dock and surrounded him at the water's edge. A police officer took hold of him, but Watton was ripped out of the officer's grasp by the mob. Bricks and stones were thrown at him, driving Watton into the water. Some reports say that members of the crowd at that point shouted, Let him drown, as Watton floundered in the water trying to swim. A detective climbed down a ship's rope and was about to pull the man out of the water when a stone thrown from the middle of the crowd struck Watton in the head and he sank. His battered corpse was later recovered. Although a number of police officers were at the scene on the night of the murder, no arrests were made. The police raid on Upper Pitt Street continued and 11 black men appeared in court the next morning, several with bandaged heads. One was wearing his naval uniform. All were charged with attempted murder on the flimsiest identification evidence. Over the next three days, White mobs up to 10,000 strong ruled Liverpool streets, attacking any black person they saw. As for the actual murder of Charles Watton, no one was questioned. The inquest into his murder opened and closed in a single day a week later. It was said that the dead man was reasonably believed to have fired at the police and that he was escaping lawful arrest. The stone that hit him was thrown from the middle of the crowd while a police officer tried to rescue him. The jury recorded these events without even calling the event an unlawful killing. In his book, Black and British, A Forgotten History, historian David Olusoga concludes that Charles Watton was lynched, given the public nature of the act and the inability or unwillingness of the law 
to determine who was at fault. In May 2016, a BBC commemorative plaque was dedicated to Watton at the site of his death. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something new from this video. Please like and share if you did and subscribe to the channel if you are new here.